Namaskar, good morning to all of you. So let us uh, start the program with uh, welcoming the guest of this evening with a uh, traditional commotion and the general offer to all the guest speakers. However, 
as was seen at the time at the time of Tagore in some countries when the very nationalism was narrowed down to suit a specific agenda can be unhealthy. That is what Gurudev was against the advocated a highly and universally benevolent with the basis of love and social progress. His promotion of the unity of Western East was also based on his principle. Grand is Gurudev's philosophy and its scope and reach bigger while self-reliance is essential but at the same time it should not become the cause for dragging us backwards. The scholars who are experts on this topic are here and I do not want to take much of your time. Uh, these are some of my thoughts I shared with all of you. So now I gladly welcome all the learned speakers and also the learned uh, literary lovers and Tagore fans and students also I could see and thank you all. Now I request uh, Professor Udena and Singhji uh, to deliver the inaugural address before that I will just briefly introduce him. Uh, Professor Udena and Singhji is currently Dean Faculty of Arts at MIT University Gurugram, who poet, playwright, essayist and a linguist. Uh, Professor uh, Udena and Singhji published 12 books of poems and plays in Maithili and 11 books of literary essays, short stories and poetry in Bangla. We have translating several books uh, from and into many languages. And he received a Sahitya Award for Poetry in 2017 besides Kadaigar uh, Poetry Award Chennai and Jyotishwar Samman and uh, Sir Ganganarcha Samman. He served as the first Pro Vice Chancellor at Visokarthi Shantani Ketan. Earlier he had set up a Center for Applied Linguistics and Translation Studies uh, as well as the Study India Program at the University of Hyderabad and National Translation Mission and the National Testing Agency as the Director of Central Ministry of Indian Language in Mysore had also taught at the University of Delhi, Baroda and Solar. Welcome to Professor Uday Narayan Singh. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Wonderful Rao. And uh, today is a very important day because of one sixty first anniversary of the world. And uh, as we all know, this obituary of the world, Gandhi had made a very interesting comment, which relates to nationalism debate. He said that in the death of Rabindranath Tagore, you not only lost the greatest poet of the age, but an ardent nationalist who was also a humanitarian. Now this remark raises a question. You know that nationalists hated in Tagore because we are constantly told that we think that Tagore was not really nationalist. It was against them. So, therefore, we look into this next question uh, what exactly, and some related issues, what exactly was the idea of the standpoint? Now, obviously, the idea of ruralizing one's own country and culture by running down others could not make us more nationalist, as Tagore had always commented in his Bengali treatises. Uh, particularly, he wrote the letters, he wrote the letters from Russia called Russia Chichi. And that, uh, if you look at it, as it says that uh, you can't do it at the cost of some others. Your own country's nationalism, or your own country's prestige uh, cannot be such that you run down the others. In fact, the idea of nationalism emerged at a time when national maps were being drawn, redrawn, changed in the 19th century. So many countries in Europe were coming and disappearing and merging and splitting. That was the kind of situation. And this was called the century of nation building by uh, the editor of The Economist at that time, Walter Backbone. And therefore, Tagore's early warning would be very important, I think, for India and those 50 countries which were to become countries, were to become independent nation states after World War II. So this was an alarm for the states and the politicians or the culture policy makers of those countries. Now, as leaders of Tagore would know, 1916 was a very crucial period in Tagore's 
journey towards the debate of nationalism because <coughs> that was the time we think that his resentment, his, his anger on the imperialist Japan which had mis mistreated or maltreated China only because Japan was <coughs> So this aggressive nationalism idea was something in which he was uh, talking about in several of his talks. He was to deliver in 1960 30 different talks in U.S. Yes. So in different universities, in different cities, he was doing his talks. And in particular, he was to come to Abdullah Champagne. So in fact, not everybody has retained all those memories because uh, since I happen to be also in Urbana Champagne, for my own uh, postdoc work. So I would, I look at the library and they have retained and maintained uh, the visit of the world very fondly. And uh, he was to uh, give a talk in October 1916, but he couldn't come because of third speaking of 30 times in different places, different cities, at that particular age, advanced age, it was not easy and told me his health. But remember that uh, even at that point of time, the cult of nationalism, the this was the topic of the, of the lecture. It was sold for one dollar per seat. In the sense that you know, if you if you have been in you know, in the United Champion, you know a large auditorium and selling one dollar per seat those days. Uh, why? Because the money has to be raised for Shanti Nikita. Basically Tagore would whatever he would do, whether he would dance, he would take his troop or you sing or you decide when you give talks, everything was for raising money for his own institution, Shantini. So that was the idea. But ultimately, Tagore did speak there toward the end of December. Uh, there. And while Tagore was praiseful of the economic and social development of Japan, which would set an example for other countries to follow, but their strident form of nationality aspirations had to bring about a corrosion that was undesirable. So what would have become a symbol of hope in the Asia, Asian countries uh, became an instance of oppression in modern history. This is suggested well because of the creation of a country from Now, we know that uh, in 2017, uh, newsweavers Wars and journals were full of uh, discussion, discussion on this issue of October uh, series of lectures. But by 2018, uh, they also started planting stories that they were for the German agent. And uh, uh, he was accused of being part of a German plot of revolution in India. Uh, so no, he has always been a poet who was in the limelight. And you really have a poet who opined on so many different areas, uh, so many different subjects. He was, of course, himself, as you know, he and his father both were uh, praiseful of Brother Ramon Roy, pardon followers of Brother Ramon Roy, the first liberal dictator uh, uh, whose interest we are here, we are celebrating now. Now, his, the course idea of internationalism was, in fact, a product of this family background. That this internationalism was promoted and projected also by Brother Ramon Roy. And Tagore says in one place, Ramon Roy was able to assimilate the ideals of Europe so completely because he was not overwhelmed by them. There was no poverty or weakness on his side. He had ground of his own on which he could take his stand, where he could secure his acquisitions. The true wealth of India was not hidden from him. For this he had already made his own. Consequently, he had with him the touchstone by which he could test the wealth of others. This is a wonderful statement, very uh, appreciative of what Ramon Roy did. But also remember somebody who knows only foreign languages, including Persia. So he would be rich with Persia, with traditional knowledge, but also was rich with Sanskrit knowledge. So how Veda and Upanishad and ancient Indian treatises could be made into work in modern India, in shaping modern India, that was the kind of experiment that Ramon Roy was doing. You would see that Tagore did not agree with him fully because Tagore's idea was not really to bring back 
later generation. He was partly also had his own support for Upanishad in thoughts, but he had his own ideas. <coughs> Come to that point. The fourth point was not to be overwhelmed by the Western concept of nationalism. We all know that throughout history, ordinary human beings felt very strongly as to where they belonged. In other words, feeling strongly about one's root, lineage, territory was not uncommon. But most wars, I'm not saying uh, all, but most wars, battles, as well as skirmishes, and the very misunderstanding, misadventures had their roots in situations where someone from outside one's group questioned about the core identity of the group or about the justifiability of that group formation. Now, one did not have hard and fast rules about defining principles of group identity. Today, of course, in social media platforms, we define this is a group, this is for this purpose, etc., etc. We set the rules. But those days, uh, it was would have started from so many uh, ideas. So, in real politics, group formation depended on unwritten definitions and conventions from ancient. Now, the interesting feature of identity formation was that one could, on several counts, for several reasons, belong to several groups at the same time. Now, let me take my own example. You introduced me as a Maitreyi speaker. So my belonging to Maitreyi speech community and my membership of a larger group of Bihari identity or my membership of the spatial group, group based on space, called Bengal, because of my birth, my schooling in Bangla, my grooming, my being an Indian, all can coexist side by side. So I can be so many, I can, I need not be just one belonging to one group. Now, uh, in Bangladesh, when we discuss my books in Bangla, I'm not treated as an alien person. I'm treated as a part of the culture of Bangladesh. So, in a way, culturally, cultural, uh, you know, nationalism is a different kind of thing than the political nationalism I would say. So, therefore, I'm not surprised to read the following definition in Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, they define it very simply. If you just go to their Encyclopedia, they would say nationalism is a modern movement. Throughout history, people have been attached to the native soil, to the tradition of their parents, and to establish territorial authorities. So it was not until the end of 18th century that nationalism began to be a generally recognized sentiment, molding public and private life, and one of great, if not the greatest, single determining factors of modern history. Now, taking a cue from here, one could argue that nationalism was and nationalism is basically an ideology based on certain premises. What were those premises? Uh, legitimacy granted to the concept of nationalism was based on international relations, treatises, world organizations. They provided a legal basis. From a cultural idea, it became a set of liberalizing movements and it followed the trajectory of American uh, Revolution, the French Revolution, and the states earlier, as you know, belonged to a ruling clan. Now, whatever name you may give this ruling clan to, the situation changed when the movement of nationalism spread under which leadership passed on to a new kind of entity called nation state. Rather than remaining under a city state, a regional lord, or a zonal power, or a king or a member. When this cultural concept gained popularity in Europe, it became a doctrine that each nationality should form a nation state that would have a specific name, differentiating it from the rest of the world. A name with its own flag, with its own song, with its other symbols, and that the state must include all members of that nationality. Even before the political nationalism emerged, there was a kind of cultural nationalism, which the poets, the painters, the sculptors, the writers, the performers, scholars, all of them were propagating. So there was not just a question of political movement, so also a cultural movement in some sense. One of the purposes of such creative activities by the poets, painters, philosophers was to arouse a feeling of nationalism as a matter of pride. Interestingly, it had linguistic fallout also. With my professional background being linguistics, I would rather look into that. With the breakdown of monarchy and the hold of religious authorities, the high languages, and if you look at the diglossia, for instance, they talk about high code and the low code. The high languages were replaced by the literary vernaculars, each with a territory and each with a 
population. The feeling of cultural nationalism was fueled further in opposing foreign rulers in South Asian space, which was when the idea of nation states became stronger with their linguistic connect. Nepali in Nepal, Sinhal in Sri Lanka, Urdu in Pakistan, Pashto in Afghanistan, later Bengali in Bangladesh. But India was different. The equating mother with motherland and mother tongue, this was already a part of ancient tradition in this region. This is only a time to sing songs in praise of this connection. The other demands, such as the need for viable agricultural production, marketing the produce, the requirement of a large profitable commerce, etc., this gave rise to entities that were much bigger than regions or zones, but still manageable enough as governing entities. The sense of universal was the dominant philosophy earlier, but now the growth of a particular, growth of the parochial, growth of the local, this became important. Now, before the movement impacted the issue, in fact, if you look at the history of Indian literature, you will find that the Hegemony of Sanskrit, which was opposed by the practical specialists to the Akhobrantha writers, this is the same kind of you know, revolution against going against the authority, central authority. So when I took, uh, before the movement impacted the Asian space, we see emergence of many different nationalisms in Europe, in particular many models of governance came up in the whole world. To simplify the story, I'm not adding to the debates that emerged in these different kinds of nations, what should be the basis of this nationalism? Is it liberalism, secularism, humanism, rationalism, or based on certain rights? Different people advocate it differently. Let's not go into the details, but all of them walk down to one point that was sovereignty. This is connected with sovereignty issue. There were many variations as well. Where the Italian wave of nationalism was concerned with moves to unify different states within the bigger state, promoting liberal nationalism, German experiment was different. Now, Tagore was a student of time and space, as we all know, and a reader of the world literature and world news. He was aware of these courses of events that preceded him. More than in his polemical essays, he decided that he will speak about nationalism through his writings. So the first thing was Goa. From 1907 to 1909, serialized in Probashi, which touched upon many themes. Motherhood, women's emancipation, love, friendship, caste issues, religion, spirituality, but Bora main trust was nation and nationalism. Now, for Krishna Kripalani, he uh, made a very interesting comment. He says, Bora is more than not. It's like Yasudev writing Mahabharata. It's an epic of India in tradition, in transition, at a crucial period of modern history, when the social concerns and intellectual awareness of the new intelligentsia were in the throes of a great journey. No other book gives so masterly an analysis of the complex Indian social life with its teeming contradictions or the character of Indian nationalism which draws its roots from renaissance Hinduism and stretches out in arms towards universal humanity. Remember Gora, he was writing and was planning about Gora 1905 particularly after the split of Bengal as proposed by the British, when they were trying to split into the Hindu Bengal and the Muslim Bengal. So that was the time when this religion issue became important, the caste issue became very important. So he was planning from 1905, started writing that uh, soon after, and 1907 to 1909 he was talking about it. Remember that this is something which predates many of the theorists of nationalism. Some of those were very important traditions of nationalism. He was talking about this through actually creative writing much earlier. And even later, Ghari Bhai, 1916, is a story of how nationalism dismantles community life and releases the devil of ethno-religious violence. Similarly, Chara Chai, which he wrote later in 1934, is an early perhaps the first exploration of the roots of the industrialized assembly line violence as a specialization of the modern times. So this is something which Tagore's project was very clear from the beginning. In his writings on nationalism of India, he describes India's real problem. What is India's real problem? He says India's real problem is social, not political. And he identified it as a problem of race or racial unity. He had no hesitation to tell the Americans, because when they were criticizing him, what about your caste, you know, your Hinduism, is really you know, four different varnas and all that. He said, and what about yourself? You look at yourself, how you've been treating 
the Hispanics. How you have been treating the, the blacks? No, so you have not been able to come out of the racial problem from Russia. So what, what about India? So India is also trying, struggling to get out of that situation at this particular point of time. So uh, coming back to recent presidential election, which happened when Joe Biden came up, we also have seen that once again the black versus down black issue uh, was very important, a very prominent issue at that particular point of time. So uh, he says, the Gore says, that history shows that we have tried to exist and yet seek for some basis of unity, cultural unity. This basis has come through our saints, our poets, like Nana, Kabir, Chaitanya and others, preaching one God to all races of India. For him, modern science has brought in the kind of world unity that was missing earlier because of geographical limits of each country, because of limitation of facilities of communication. So the people try to develop their sense of unity within their area of segregation. His prophetic lines could be seen here with being a very well thought out of argument. He says, during the evolution of the nation and moral culture of brotherhood was limited by geographical boundaries because at that time those boundaries were true. Now they have become imaginary lines of tradition divested of qualities of real obstacles. So the time has come when man's moral nature must deal with great fact, with all seriousness or perish. The poet thinks that Indians of tomorrow will outgo their earlier fallacious teaching that our country is greater than our humanity. That is why Tagore was critical of Japan and others, who in the East are attempting to take upon, take unto itself a history which is not the outcome of its own living. Because of the fact that the modernity aligned in India with Western edu education, which tried to dislodge our own teaching learning system, we would always be torn between the two strong traditions, the Oriental tradition and the Western tradition. And he said this in his letter to Pranatha Chodha of Shodhashtra fame. Tagore spoke of the tension in his own self and he says, and I quote, I sometimes detect in myself a background where two opposing forces are constantly in action. One beckoning me to peace and secession of all strife, the other egging me onto battle. It is as though the restless energy and the will to action of the West were perpetually assaulting the citadel of my Indian placidity. Here, hence this swing, swing of pendulum between passionate pain and calm detachment, between lyrical abandon and the philosophizing, between love of my country and mockering of patriotism, between each to enter into this and longing to remain wrapped in trouble. Now, assuming nation to be an organized power, which insists on viewing one's own geographies and one's own cultural boundaries. I would, see, I would now still tell you how they were differed from the other important modern thinkers like Radha Ramon Rai, Swami Vivekananda, Sri Aurobindo. But they believe that the canonical texts of ancient India, the Vedas, the Upanishads, and the Gita, they might be at the center of India's classical culture. They were, on the other hand, rather emphasized that the undercurrent of cultural unity as reflected in the thoughts and practices of medieval mystics, poets and religious and spiritual figures that was responsible for the cultural denomination called India. Because then he was saying that look at the Charyakala. At the same time, look at the Virashaivas in Karnataka. Look at the Kashmir poets of Kashmir. Look at Lord Chaitanya and Vaishnava Patavali and various things. Look at Vidyapati. And look at also the Marathi uh, tradition, Gujarati tradition. So he said that this is something which is pan-Indian. Nobody discussed with nobody, but this evolved naturally. So in such a country, importing Western concept of nationalism was like Switzerland trying to build a navy. This is what Nandi has said, Shishnandi has said. And this position seems to be an interesting move on the part of Tagore as most of the Jews medieval time was a dark period in Indian literary history. Tagore didn't take me on that. Now as a linguist I wish to bring on the table the notion of nationalism. This is a concept which Joshua Fishman, the sociologist of language, had talked about. He talked about nation, nationalism and nationalism. This debate he brought in. Uh, but, uh, and in his paper, a paper called Nationality, Nationalism and Nation, Nationalism. 
Fishman takes his position that unlike what was believed in Europe, the national integration of the country did not necessarily require monolingualism, which Europeans demanded. But it didn't happen in case of India. He was quoting Indian example. It was a wrong assumption that, and I quote Fishman, cultural and linguistic differences automatically tend toward demand for nation formation and language recognition. Countries like India prove otherwise. Not all language differences that exist are noted, let alone idealized. Conscious and even idealized language differences need not be divisive in a country. In this new nation of Africa and Asia, Diglossia is extremely widespread and each language has its own functionally exclusive domain. So while nationalism outlines the practicalities of making and running a nation as a unit, it should not be equated with nationalism. As the letter marks, the protest movements relate to possible social changes and consequent dislocation resulting from implementing such changes. If I talk about German nationalism, that forced a huge number of you know, Jews to leave, get completely dislocated from there and go somewhere else. And this is something which is happening again and again. Uh, but there are differences of state nationality and nationality state which other theoreticians during Tibor's time talked about, like Zangwill in 1970 or Hans Korn in 1939. They had warned that there are vast differences between the Eastern variety of nationalism and the Western variety of nationalism. So they recognized what Tibor was saying in, in that sense. And uh, Korn says, since nationalism is rooted in religious values, institutions and ideas on the one hand, and the process of secularization is essential for, form for the formation of varieties of modern nationalism. This is very important that, uh, that uh, we have to understand the slight or the subtle difference. As Angle's writing me, even there he says, and I quote, were it not in the fact that religious minorities are kept alive by persecution or sustained like Balkan racial minorities by the consciousness of powerful majorities in other lands, they would soon succumb to the national melting pots. For each melting pot is not merely fusing religion into the state of church. It is always fusing the church itself in the mold of the state. The state has always been blessed against the rival power and has underlined it even when it appeared to establish it. Unquote. Given the fact that such debates about limits of nationalism and demands for making it overarching, in running a nation state uh, is concerned, it is not hard to see why Tagore was raising his voice against the ideas of a hegemonistic nationalism from the beginning. The challenge will be to see if one can unmake the current forms of nationalism into a more secular, more democratic, more sensitive towards all kinds of minorities, ethnic, religious, and linguistic. I thought these are a few things I would place before you my ideas on nation, nationalism, and nationalism, and how to go with it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your very
Sir, even the job is in. और काफी स्ट्रॉन्गली होती है 
आप जानते हैं कि लेसन्स को लेकर के जो भी स्ट्रक्चरल जो बातचीत होती है राष्ट्र को लेकर के कि हाँ राष्ट्र की एक टेरिटरी होती है कि उसका मतलब चंदा भी होता है फ्लैग भी होता है या ऐसे बहुत सारे सिम्बॉल्स होते हैं जिसको लेकर पूरा नेशन बनता है और जिसके जिसको लेकर के मतलब गणना जिसको लेकर के अपनी कुर्बानी देना जैसे कोई भी राष्ट्र के नागरिक उसको मानते हैं तो उन्नीस सौ पाँच का बंगाल विभाजन भी बड़ा फैक्टर था जिसके चलते हो सकता है टेबुल के अंदर राष्ट्र के बारे में एक प्योरिटाइज करना शुरू होता है और बहुत प्रसिद्ध गीत है जिसके तरफ सहारी भी साझा करेंगे गाँव में शादी करेंगे जो बंगाल माटी बंगाल जल बंगाल वाली बंगाल फल की चर्चा होती है और फिर कहते हैं पुण्य हो पुण्य हो कि मतलब बंगाल की धरती बंगाल की माटी बंगाल का जल बंगाल की हवा बंगाल की प्रकृति सबकी समृद्धि हो अब देखेंगे कि जो पांचवें कॉन्टिनेंट है चित्ती जल पावर गगन सभी ये इस पूरे कोची में दिखाई पड़ता है और ये जो चित्ती जल पावर गगन सभी है ये पूरी की पूरी एक तरह से एक फिलोसफिकल टच है जो एक तरह से इस देश के जो पुराने जो जर्जिस्टल नॉलेज के जो मतलब चार फैमिली लोग लोग रहे हैं मतलब हिंदुस्तान को समझने के लिए भारत को समझने के लिए उस चीज़ का इस्तेमाल करके उसका प्रयोग करते हैं और हिंदी के लेखक या दूसरी भाषा के लेखक भी खुल कर इसकी चर्चा करते हैं और ये पांचों तत्व काफी कंपोनेंट है तो ये सीधे है और जो टेगोर का जो समय है पूरा आप देखेंगे उस समय चार जो लीडर्स हैं काफी मतलब वो इस क्षेत्र में काम करते हैं अम्बेडकर भी हैं भगत सिंह भी हैं नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस और गांधी की चर्चा सारे करते ही है और इस बात की चर्चा होती कि गांधी ने टैगोर तो गुरुदेव का था तो गुरुदेव ने उनको महात्मा कहा ये भी अच्छा सीक्वेंस दिखाई देता है हमें इस इससे गांधी के राष्ट्रवाद की जब चर्चा होती है तो कहा जाता है कि गोखले और उनका जो गीता रहस्य का जो अनुवाद है उस पर काफी प्रभाव है और उसमें जो ज्ञान भक्ति कर्म का जो पूरा एक थ्यूरी है वह दिखाई पड़ता है गांधी गाय बगाय उससे काफी प्रभावित है हाँ लेकिन गांधी की जो सबसे बड़ी विशेषता है कि अपने को वे धीरे धीरे एक तरह से भारतीय समाज के अंदर जो भारतीय समाज है किसान समाज है ग्रामीण समाज है उससे जुड़ते हैं गांधी और इसके चलते गांधी के राष्ट्रवाद या गांधी का जो भी व्यसन के प्रति पूरी बनती है वो डिफरेंट बनती है अम्बेडकर के यहाँ दलित रेनसा का सवाल था जिसमें जो बुद्ध और खुले जैसे विचार को भी चिंता दिखाई पड़ती है और जाहिर है कि टैगोर का जो समय है टैगोर का लेखन उन्नीस सौ इकतालीस में होता है तो टैगोर ही जिन्होंने काफी बड़ी ये चीजें भी एक तरह से नेशन के बिल्डअप में मदद करती हैं जो दलित रेनसा का मामला बुद्ध का और भगत सिंह उसी दौर के हैं जिनका क्रांतिकारी समाजवादी जो विचारधारा काफी प्रभावित करता है सुभाष चंद्र बोस के बारे में सब जानते हैं कि जो जाति चेतना उनके अंदर है जो रेसेस नस्त और स्वर्तमान डिग्निटी की जो बात है उसको काफी फॉर्मल तरीके से लेते हैं तो एक जो राष्ट्र का नागरिक होता है उसको लगता है कि उसके अंदर एक अपना जो नस्त है काफी पावरफुल है उसको महत्व देना बहुत जरूरी है और उसके सम्मान में जो डिग्निटी की बात होती है सम्मान की बात होती है उसी तरह ये सब बातचीत होती है आप एक और चीज मेरे जहन में आती है जिसकी तरफ मैं खुद मुंबई पर बातचीत नहीं कर रहा हूँ दस मिनट की बातचीत हुई थी इसी साल में अभी बहुत बारीकी के साथ मतलब उदयनाथ जी ने उनके तीनों न्यास की चर्चा की इसमें थोड़ा सा एक तरह से ये पॉलिटिकल जो एक तरह से मतलब सेंस है टेगोर का वो दिखाई पड़ता है गोरा की चर्चा इन्होंने की गोरा के बारे में कहा जाता है कि गोरा बहुत बारीकी के साथ साइकोनालिसिस करता है मतलब कैसे एक सोसाइटी का जो सामाजिक जो गतिशीलता होती है और उस दौर में मतलब जिस तरह से वो रियलाइज करता है पूरा एक इंटरनल जो फ्लो उसका पूरा है उसको फिर कैसे लेसन से जोड़ता है एक अलग वो है डिबेट और डिस्कशन का पार्ट है घरे बैरे के बारे में शायद सहारी भी चर्चा करेंगे बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट हो गए थे उन्नीस सौ सोलह का उपन्यास है उसमें मैं थोड़ा आगे भी चर्चा करूँगा उसमें एक तरह से मतलब कहा जाता है किस तरीके से सोशल स्ट्रक्चर तैयार करते हैं एक घर और बाहर के बहाने की घर के अंदर क्या हो रहा है बाहर क्या हो रहा है तो वह एक तरह से उस जमाने का उस समय का जो भारतीय समाज है जिसकी तरफ व्यवचन इशारा करते हैं उन्नीस सौ दस के बाद कि कैसे अंग्रेजी राज के बाद धीरे धीरे यहाँ का सोशल ऑर्डर चेंज हो रहा था या सोशल मतलब सामाजिक परिवर्तन हो रहा था और उसके समानांतर एक तरह से जो घर था महिलाएं भी घर से बाहर निकलती है और धीरे धीरे मिली क्लास का जो 
ये होता है तो उस तरह भी एक तरह से इशारा करता है ग्लोबल और इसमें जो जैसे बुरा एक तरह से पोलिटिकल साइकोनालिसिस की बात करता है वैसे ही मतलब खरे बाड़े जो पॉलिटिकल जो सोशियोलॉजी है उसकी तरफ इशारा करता है तो टैगोर के राष्ट्रवाद को करने में इसकी बड़ी भूमिका रही है तीसरा जो चार अध्याय है उसमें जिसकी चर्चा भी उदयनारायण जी कर रहे थे जो पॉलिटिकल मतलब जो उसके अंदर है वो भी एक अलग तरह का और वह उसका धीरे धीरे संबंध जो है भारतीय जो एक तरह से मतलब जिसे सभ्यता को कहते हैं उसकी तरफ विभाषक या संकेत करता है वहां पर और इसीलिए कहा जाता है कि टेगोर के यहाँ मतलब राष्ट्रवाद का जो पूरा स्ट्रक्चर है वो अलग तरह का है और उसको समझना बहुत कठिन काम है जारी हम एक स्टेटमेंट देते हैं कि टेगोर का राष्ट्रवाद किस तरह का है और लेकिन जिस तरीके से वो एक तरह से चीजों को डरेट करते हैं उसको लेकर काफी विचार करते हैं वो बिल्कुल अलग तरह का देता है मैं जब तो इकाजे की चर्चा हुई तो मैं राष्ट्रवाद की किताब पढ़ा था मुझे आश्चर्य हो रहा था कि ई पी थॉमसन ने उसकी भूमिका उसकी लिखी है और जाहिर ई पी थॉमसन बहुत बड़े हिस्टोरियंस हैं और उसकी तरफ अभी तरह भी इशारा दूसरे तरह से कर रहे थे कि ई पी थॉमसन का जो पूरा जो एक तरह से जो उनका इतिहास की जो पूरी प्रक्रिया समझने की है आ, उसमें एक तरह से जो समाजवाद का जो वैकल्पिक है या जो डेमोक्रेसी है लोकतंत्र है या फिर जो मानवीय ह्यूमन वैल्यूज हैं और उसके जो उदास शब्द हैं जिसको लिबरल एक तरह से ड्रीम्स कहते हैं ये तीन चीजों के अंदर तो दिखाई देती है अगर हम थोड़ा सा टेगोर को ध्यान से पढ़े तो टेगोर के भी राष्ट्रवाद में सारी चीजें दिखाई वहां पर भी मतलब एक अलग तरह का मतलब सोशलिज्म को नहीं कहने साथ साथ उसका एक अलग फॉर्मेट है बट डेमोक्रेटिक स्पेस वहाँ काफी है उनके नॉवल्स में हर कोई पात्र काफी छूट लेता है उसमें कोई फॉर्म ही नहीं उसके ऊपर दिखाई पड़ी है और खेरे खेरे बाहर में तो आप देखेंगे कि वो जो विमला है वो बॉन्डिंग कोर्ट करके भी बाहर निकलती है पूरे के पूरे और जो संदीप उसका करेक्टर उसके साथ पार्ट मिलती है तो तीसरा जो मानवीय जो फेमस जो फॉर्म है उसमें जो लिबरल जो मतलब एक तरह से ड्रीम्स का मतलब सपना ड्रीम्स का मतलब ये भी सारा यह भी होता है कि आप कितनी उड़ान ले सकते हैं किसी चीज को लेकर के सपने करने के लिए बहुत छोटी चीज है सपनों का मतलब होता है कि आपके पास पूरी आजादी है कि आप किसके साथ कितने ऊंचाई तक उड़ सकते हैं अपने विचार को लेकर अपने भाव को लेकर के और आप जानते हैं कि मतलब तो इस पूरे प्रोसेस में जो सारी बहस हो रही थी कि जो सारा डिबेट कह रहे कि सोलह संधि क्रांति उन्नीस में हुई थी उस समय एक अलग तरह का इकोनॉमिक मतलब जिसको राष्ट्रवाद ही कर सकते हैं उस तरह सुखा हो रहा था पूरे जर्मनी में भी इकोनॉमिक क्राइसिस थी ये सारी चीजें जो थी एक तरह से मिला मिला करके एक अलग तरीके से मिले जाती है और हमसे भी जो एक अच्छी बात है कि वो इस बात की चर्चा करते हैं कि जो मार्केट होता है जो बाजार होता है आपको एक बिल्कुल डिफरेंट टाइप होता है और यही कहते हैं कि वो धीरे धीरे बाजार होता है वो गरीब व्यक्तियों में तब्दील हो जाता है दुकानों और मेलों में कीमतों पर झगड़ने और कभी कभी सामूहिक कार्रवाई द्वारा भरण पोषण के उन नियमों के लाभ करने करते हैं जो उनके अस्तित्व के लिए महत्वपूर्ण है अब देखेंगे कि आज जो बाजार दिखाई पड़ता है चाहे बड़ी बड़ी कंपनी के रिलेटेड हो चाहे रिलायंस के हो जिसके भी हो आपके साथ जब बातचीत करते थे इस लेवल पर बातचीत करते हैं कि बहुत बड़ी क्राइसिस में रहता है रिलायंस कंपनी का वो आपको उस स्कीम से जो कहीं देते हैं वो या फाइनेंस करके रहें या तो कई बार ऐसा है कि जब वो ये जो पूरा का पूरा जो सोच समझ का जो पार्ट है जो चीज दिखाई देती है तो वही मैं सोच रहा था कि हमसम जो उनका लिख उसके पीछे क्या कारण हो सकता है उसके पीछे क्या चीजें हो सकती है एक कारण हो सकता है जिसकी तरफ उदयनारायण संकेत दे रहे थे कि टैगोर के राष्ट्रवाद में जो चीज दिखाई पड़ती है कि एक पश्चिमी राष्ट्रवाद को वो वैसा राष्ट्रवाद नहीं है दूसरा जिस ओरिजिन की तरफ इशारा कर रहे थे तो वह उसके बारे में लगभग सारे इतिहासकार विचार करते हैं कि वहां पर जो चीजें दिखाई पड़ती है उसमें कहीं ना कहीं मतलब टैगोर जो अपने राष्ट्रवाद को पश्चिम से नहीं जोड़ने का अर्थ यह भी है चाहे जर्मनी को यूरोप का हो या अमेरिका का भी हो तो वहां से नहीं जोड़ने का एक अर्थ यह भी होता है कि वो इनसे बड़े जो दूसरी दुनिया है जिसे हम लोग कई बार तीसरे तीसरी दुनिया के देश की चर्चा करते हैं जिसमें अफ्रीका है या बहुत सारे गरीब मुल्क है जहाँ पर 
आज भी मतलब क्योंकि वो गरीब है इसीलिए उनका कल्चर बहुत वीक पर होता है उसी को लेकर के प्रधानमंत्री को जस्टिफाई करते हैं अपने पावर को दिखाते हैं आप देखेंगे जो आदमी जितना गरीब होगा वह उतना ही अपनी कल्चरल आइडेंटिटी को लेकर के वो एग्रेसिव होना शुरू होता है उसको दिखाने की कोशिश करता है तो अब ये हो सकता है कि अगर हम उधर जाते हैं मतलब तो उस राष्ट्रवाद के अगर डिपार्चर पॉइंट देखते हैं तो कई बार मुझे यह भी लगता है कि टेगोर का जो राष्ट्रवाद है उसमें बहुत बड़ी भूमिका शायद नहीं है उसकी बजाय जो वह बैक में जाते हैं जिसको हम सिविलाइजेशन की बात करते हैं सभ्यता की चर्चा करते हैं वह सभ्यता चाहे भारतीय सभ्यता की जो बहुत सारी चीजें हैं वे सारी चीजें मिला करके टेगोर के राष्ट्रवाद के निर्माण करने में मदद करती है और चाहे कि मतलब उदयनारायण जी ने हंस के जो आप देखेंगे कि किसी भी पूरी दुनिया में एक जो अलग तरह का उभार दिखाई दे रहा है कि हर देश में ऐसा जनसमूह खड़ा हो रहा है जो अपने को अति राष्ट्रवादी कर रहा है या अपने को बड़ा राष्ट्रवादी कर रहा है तो उस फॉर्मेट में बदलने के लिए तीन चीज की बहुत जरूरत होती है कि उसके मतलब प्राइमरी पार्ट होते हैं एक होता है कि उस स्टेट की राज्य की अवधारणा क्या है जिसकी तरफ अभी चर्चा हो रही है दूसरा होता है जो ब्रिटेन जो लिटरेचर होता है वह भी ऐसी चीजों को बनाने में बहुत मदद करता है जैसे आप देखें कि बिहार में मान लीजिए कि कुंवर सिंह को लेकर के बहुत सारे जो पोपुलरिस्ट हैं वो तो जमाने में लिखे गए और मतलब ये पोपुलरिस्ट की चर्चा है जैसे मान ली वो राम कवि करके कहते हैं कि उलिए गुनर का रामा मटिया में मिली गई है ना ही ले सुराज के राम मतलब बेसिकली जो एक नेशन का जो कंसेप्ट है राष्ट्रवाद का जो कंसेप्ट है वो इस तरफ से इशारा करता है कि कहीं ना कहीं हमें एक तरह से फ्रीडम चाहिए मतलब मुक्ति चाहिए अब यह मुक्ति किस चीज से चाहिए पॉलिटिकल मतलब गुलामी से जैसे भारत पर अंग्रेजी राज्य उनसे गुलामी पर या किससे मुक्ति चाहिए जो पूरा जिस कल्चर है जैसे मनीष से मुक्ति चाहिए या किस इसी तरफ व्यंजन भी इशारा करते हैं कि ठीक है मुक्ति गाँव की तरह कोई बात नहीं बड़े बैठ जाएगा यहाँ पर बट काम अगर वही करेगा तो फिर क्या फायदा उसके आने से तो उससे मुक्ति चाहिए तो लिटरेचर जो होता है वह भी कई बार उसकी अच्छी भूमिका भी होती है कई बार जैसे अभी बहुत सारे अपनी मतलब चीजें जो बनते हैं वो एक अलग बहुत सारे नाम नहीं लेना चाहिए समय बहुत अच्छी चल रहा है तो मैं सारा करके थोड़ा आप लोग सोचते रहिए उसके बारे में और तीसरा जो होता है जो संबंधित जो समुदाय के अंदर एक वर्चस्व की आकांक्षा आने लगती है आप देखेंगे कि पूरी दुनिया में जो खास कम्युनिटी जो तीसरी बात कर रहा है शराब में कर रहा है उसके अंदर अलग तरह की मतलब आकांक्षा दिखाई पड़ती है अब वो कहेंगे बात की चर्चा में क्यों कर रहा था इसकी तरफ वही साथ का इशारा करके अपनी बात से समाप्त हो गया आप इसे जो भी जीवन में घरे बाहरे पढ़ रखा होगा उसको ध्यान से पढ़ेंगे तो आखिरी में थोड़ा सा उदय नाम भी इशारा किया था वायलेंस की चर्चा की कि क्या राष्ट्रवाद के निर्माण में हमेशा मतलब राष्ट्रवाद जब हमारे सामने हाई पड़ता आता है तो क्या वायलेंस उसका प्राइमरी पार्ट होता है उसी बिना डिस्प्लेस का एक तरह से क्रिएशन नहीं हो सकता है और उसमें आप देखेंगे कि किस तरीके से मतलब वो सारा जो मेरे बारे में जो सारा तंत्र टेकोर करते हैं इस बात उदाहरण के लिए कि जो उसकी नायिका मिलना है कि भारत के पुरुष देश की नारी में एक बार जब धात्री का मुख देखे तो जो हम पुरुष लोग हैं अगर पार्टी नारी को देखते हैं उसमें हम देवी का रूप देखते हैं तो यह भी एक अलग तरह की तरफ चीजें लेकर के जाते हैं ऐसे बहुत उदाहरण है कि उसी का उसी उपन्यास है कि जो सुंदरी नहीं थी वो सुंदर हो गई जो थी एक मामूली औरत उसने अपने अंदर सारे बंगाल के गौरव को प्रत्यक्ष अनुभव किया सारी दुनिया के साथ हमारे संबंधों में एक तरह का परिवर्तन हो गया संदीप बापू ने मुझे समझा दिया कि सारे देश को मेरी जरूरत है तो एक तो कैसे घर की औरत के अंदर धीरे धीरे एक डिजाइनर्स पैदा होती है और धीरे धीरे बाहर निकलती है उसके अंदर लगता है कि 
gospod Zdenski, ki bojo pri nam tam tem obrnjenju v tej sediti, kde se lenkrati. Ali film na tem bo res 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 izdenjo po tih nezaštne besite, ki bojo pa pa nekaj z kisara na tem tem. Če bi interes se na to bo tisa video, in dobro se bilo, da ne bo tudi na bolj meni, to pa je len se jako na prvih, ali tega tega bo to raštovat, kjer se ne bi kaj prodaje. To, a kaj se tega ki bilo, mali partij četna, ki je ander jo na to bo do tih vadih na potih bolj meni kaj bolj meni na sliki. A partij četna, jo ki sem partij četna, partij tak kaj tega, Vse je pa to reinvestigirati, vse je pa to reinvestigirati, to matlab, kaj se bi kaj predili? A kaj dekljeni, ki bolj se ne bada, kaj dekljeni, ki mora bo bila ta, ki se je skelo fajt, kaj na to, to poče horni, kaj na to, kaj vse bodi, ki bodi matlab, kaj če tem, ki če je. Vse je dekljeni, ki jo, te bolj ne bi bi kaj predili, ki arti jo četna je, ki je obnesi na nebo je, उस ऑपरेशन पर तो मैं आप क्या क्या लोगों को दिखाई पड़ता है उसमें आप इस बार पर कह रहे कि इसमें मैंने कहा कि 57 नहीं दिखाई पड़ता है और ऐसे बहुत सारे लेखक कह रहे हैं कि ये कर्जा नहीं करते ये मैं तुम्हारे हिंदी के बड़े लेखक बताएं रामचंद्र सुब्लेम वे भी अपने हिंदी साहित्य के आस और इसलिए ये कि हिंसा जो हिंसा जो मुझे मुझे बने को इतने बढ़ती है तो ये सारी चीजें बिलाक करके मतलब जो जो पूरा का पूरा जो हंसा बनता है देवों के राष्ट्रवाद का वो बिल्कुल ठीक है उधर ना भी लोगों को तो उसको डिफाइन किया वो तरीके से किया लेकिन हमेशा देवों के बड़ा स्पेस देते हैं कि उस और ठीक है जैसे निश्चित वाली बात तो बहुत बड़ी है और फिर मतलब वो कहा जा सकता है कि मतलब वो टेगोर की जो सबसे बड़ी भूमिका थी टेगोर के राष्ट्रवाद की जो सबसे बड़ी भूमिका थी ठीक है कि कि एक तरह से आप कहिए कि मतलब वो अपने पूरे चिंतन में कहा जा सकता है कि एक तरह से मतलब वो जो बसी और एशिया और अफ्रीका के साथ मतलब भारत के जो प्राचीन जो रिश्ते उसको एक तरह से जारी करने की कोशिश करते हैं और उसको राष्ट्रवाद के प्रोसेस से जोड़ते हैं और इसीलिए कई बार मुझे लगता है कि उनके यहाँ भी राष्ट्रवाद के रिश्ते जो फॉर्मेट दिखाई पड़ता है वो उसी डिकोलोनाइज माइंड की तरफ विज्ञान करो से लेकर के सब बहुत सारे टेक्स्ट हैं। उन्हें टेको कहीं ना कहीं उससे अपने राष्ट्रवाद को मतलब ब्रिटिश उपनिवेशवाद या साम्राज्यवाद की बजाय करके उस पुरानी तरह से जोड़ करके देखने की कोशिश करते हैं। तो इन्हीं कुछ बातों के साथ उन्हें बात समाप्त करो। उन्हें साइड लेकर दिखा 
Nobel Prize to Pritin Academy around the world, Professor Mosby. Am I audible to all of you? Before I begin, I would like to uh, acknowledge my academic mentor from Calgary University, Sanjita Dasguta, who is also a council member of Sankhi Academy, uh, the secretary of uh, uh, K. Srinivasa, and also uh, assistant editor of the Sankhi Academy, Jyoti Krishnavarma, who is shouting and who will invite me for uh, attending this uh, and be part of the symposium. I'm very thankful to Professor David Chaube. Uh, he concluded his, uh, 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 his uh, speech with uh, bringing this uh, concept of de 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 colonial uh, decolonization and decolonial thinking about diversity, colonial thinking about nationalism. My own work is in the field of education. I've been uh, studying particularly diverse education particularly from a decolonial lens for a, for a while now. I've also written about it. So what I wanted to share with all of you today is uh, also towards decolonial perspective on nationalism. As I read the world, uh, when I read uh, Tagore's writings on nationalism, based on my reading of Tagore, the argument that I would like to bring forward today is that Tagore had a distinct decolonial thinking on nationalism. He was fundamentally against the Western Eurocentric notion of political nationalism, as um, my, uh, the distinguished keynote speaker and uh, Professor Chaubey has also mentioned, a concept that was not indigenous to India. Nationalism was intrinsically connected to the Western notion of Eurocentric nation state that was primarily patriarchal, commercial, and imperial in its orientation compared to the indigenous Indian concept of Swadesh or our country, Desh Bhakti, patriotism and motherland. Tagore expressed his ideas of nationalism as uh, most of you know over here in three seminal essays that he wrote to deliver talks in the United States and Japan while he was very disturbed with the impact of the First World War. He also wrote about his ideas of nationalism in several other essays, poetry, novels, and short stories, as uh, you have already referred to it. Here, I would like to quote a particular uh, uh, section of a letter that Tagore wrote to his friend C.F. Andrews in London in 1928, where he also expressed his thoughts on nationalism and nation state. Our fight is a spiritual fight. It is for man. We are to emancipate man from the meshes that he himself has woven around him. These organizations of national egoism, if we can defy the strong, the armed, the wealthy, revealing to the world the power of the immortal spirit, the whole castle of the giant flesh will vanish in void, and then man will find his swaraj. We, the famished, ragged ragamuffins of the East, are to win freedom for all humanity. We have no word for nation in our language. When we borrow this word from other people, it never fits us. So you see here, Tagore states clearly that the Eurocentric con concept of nation is totally foreign to India. Tagore expressed his skepticism about the suitability of adopting this European concept of nation in the Indian framework, notably in two essays written in 1902. Uh, in Bangla, Nation Ki and Bharat Goshyo Shaman. The former elucidated the emergence of the Western concept of the nation and the latter discussing the differences in the social and political structures of India and Europe and the futility of replicating the foreign concept of the nation in India, which has been a land of no nations. In his essay, Nationalism in India, Tagore opines that the real problem, as uh, Professor Chaube has just mentioned, of India is not political but social. Here he comes closer, as I read, here he comes closer to Ambedkar's ideas on the Indian society. And I quote here from Tagore, our real problem in India is not political, it is social. This is a condition not only prevailing in India but among all nations. 
In finding the solution of our problem, we shall have helped to solve the world problem as well. What India has been, the whole world is now. The whole world is becoming one country through scientific facility. And the moment is arriving when you also must find a basis of unity which is not political. If India can offer to the world her solution, it will be a contribution to humanity. There is only one history, the history of man. All national histories are merely chapters in the larger one. The most important fact of the present age is that all the different races of men have come close together. And again, we are confronted with two alternatives. The problem is whether the different groups of peoples shall go on fighting with one another or find out some true basis of reconciliation and mutual help, whether it will be interminable competition or cooperation. This quote that I read when I was reading it, uh, particularly uh, as I was preparing to come for the talk here, I felt it is so relevant even today, taking into consideration what is happening in Ukraine right now, and also, you know, in the middle of the COVID pandemic, the everything that he wrote over a century ago is so, so relevant. Tagore stressed on the spiritual unity of man. What becomes clear from Tagore's writing is his disapproval of blind nationalism in the amoral, narrowly political sense of the term shown of human sensibilities borrowed from Europe where machine must be pitted against machine and nation against nation in an endless world fight of politics. And I quote from Tagore, this is his own words. Tagore's fervent appeal to his countrymen was to realize the potential of self-help within the indigenous community or Shamat. The traditional Indian model of unifying a whole population of diverse people and races. The Indian parallel of the European nation was therefore to engage in social reconstruction. This has been variously addressed by Tagore in his political essays, Bharat Bhushya Shamaj written in 1902, Augusta Obagusta written in 1905, Shravik Shamaj written in 1905. Besides his establishment of the Samashanti with the National School in 1901 as an alternative indigenous model, of education along with support from contemporary intellectuals like Prabhupada Bhuvathar. Tagore marked a significant step towards a Swadeshi Indian nationalist movement through education reform. This is how I, I personally read Tagore. Tagore's decolonial thinking stressed that the true spirit of Indian nationalism it, uh, uh, is in its humanistic concern rather than constrained political strategy. The spread of fanatic nationalism during the First World War forced him to interpret nationalism as an evil epidemic. Hence, he tried to subvert the popular idea of Eurocentric nationalism, which was more a political justification that encouraged grabbing other nations and their resources. And here again I quote from Tagore, Nationalism is a great menace, Tagore wrote. It is a particular thing which for years has been at the bottom of India's troubles. And inasmuch as we have been ruled and dominated by a nation that is strictly political in its attitude, we have tried to develop within ourselves, despite our inheritance from the past, a belief in our eventual political destiny. Tagore considered that apart from political freedom, the freedom of the mind is more important as, as some of our other speakers have already highlighted. The Eurocentric notions of freedom have forced Indians to consider political freedom as an ultimate destination in the journey of the freedom movement. He thought that blind faith in Europe will increase our greed for progression. Hence, we should give up this narrowness and be more comprehensive in our inward and outward expressions that extend freedom of the mind. And all of you know with this issue, Tagore also had lots of debates in Gandhi, uh, who uh, focused more on uh, territorial decolonization through the Swaraj movement. Hence, in his essay, Nationalism in Japan, Tagore emphasized the ancient culture of Japan more than its nationhood. And I 
quote here from one of Amartya Sen's comments on uh, divorce in, say, on nationalism in Japan. And I quote, Devo shared the admiration for Japan widespread in Asia for demonstrating the ability of an Asian nation to rival the West in industrial development and economic progress. But then Tebo went on to criticize the rise of a strong nationalism in Japan and its emergence as, its, as an imperialist nation. Tebo saw Japanese militarism as, quote, uh, illustrating the, the way nationalism can mislead even a nation of a great achievement and promise, unquote. Tebo's scattered writings on nationalism and the three seminal essays on nationalism are bold, rational, and humane critique of the Eurocentric idea of nationalism, which has caused so much misery in the world and continues to do so. The major strain that ran through Tagore's conception of nationalism over the years, as I read it, is that of universal humanism and multiculturalism. In speaking against the Eurocentric notion of nationalism, Tagore voiced his protest against a self-ravaging system of politics and organization that is detrimental not only to India or the East, but to the entire humanity at large. He advocated the importance of the nationalist movement, which might as well transcend into an internationalist movement, right? uh, as we understand from his writings but one which is constructive, which is a constructive ideal at its core, rather than a spirit of violence. Hence, let me conclude my comments uh, on Tagore's decolonial thinking on nationalism by borrowing Tagore's own words here, and I would like to read out Tagore's poem, The Sunset of Century, which is also included in the nationalism, uh, the, uh, the, the essays, uh, the volume at the end. The last sun of the century sets amidst the blood-red clouds of the West and the whirlwind of hatred. The naked passion of self-love of nations in its drunken delirium of greed is dancing to the clash of steel and the howling verses of vengeance. The hungry self of the nation shall burst in a violence of fury from its own sh shameless eating, for it has made the world its food and licking it, crunching it, and swallowing it in big morsels. It swells and swells till in the midst of its unholy feast descends the sudden shaft of heaven piercing its heart of grossness. The crimson glow of light on the horizon is not the light of thy dawn of peace, my motherland. It is the glimmer of the funeral pyre burning to ashes the vast flesh, the self-love of the nation, dead under its own excess. Thy morning waits behind the patient dark of the east, meek and silent. Keep watch, India. Bring your offerings of worship for that sacred sunrise. Let the first hymn of its welcome sound in your voice and sing. Come peace, thou daughter of God's own great suffering. Come with thy treasure of contentment, the sword of fortitude, and meekness crowning thy forehead. Be not ashamed, my brothers, to stand before the proud and the powerful with your white robe of simpleness. Let your crown be of humility, your freedom, the freedom of the soul. Build God's throne daily upon the ample bareness of your poverty, and know that what is huge is not great, and pride is not in the past. Has written many articles on Indian literature, 
in art and culture. Dr. Sa has also translated many monographs and articles for Rift Kala Academy from English to Bengali. Dr. Rani Saji. <coughs> नमस्कार अध्यक्ष महोदय और हमारे अन्य वक्ता मैं सचिव साहित्य अकेडमी का आभारी हूँ कि उन्होंने इस विषय पर हमें अंत आमंत्रित किया है दरअसल जब हम किसी विषय को लेकर थोड़ा बहुत लिखते हैं सोचते हैं समझते हैं तो हम आप पाठकों को या प्रशंसकों के लिए नहीं बल्कि अपने लिए ही शायद अध्ययन रखना चाहते हैं पाठ को पढ़ना चाहते हैं समझना चाहते हैं तो ये अवसर अकादमी ने दिया कि उनके राष्ट्रवाद को उनकी राष्ट्रीयता को उनकी राष्ट्रीय चेतना को हम उनके माध्यम से किस प्रकार ग्रहण कर सकते हैं समझ सकते हैं और थोड़ा बहुत समझा सकते हैं चूंकि समय की सीमा का पहले ही ज्योति भाई ने संकेत दे दिया था कि 10 से 12 मिनट तक तो मैंने अपने आप को सीमित रखा है और उन विषयों पर ध्यान नहीं दिया है जो उनके पूरे एक विश्व कोशीय ज्ञान को या उनके महासागर वाले लेखन को हम लोग जानते हैं और पढ़ते हैं और यानी एक जीवन नहीं है पूरा रविन्द्रनाथ को समझने के लिए और संभवतः आपके जैसे कितने ही लोग रविन्द्रनाथ पर पिछले सौ साल से सवा सौ साल से दिख रहे हैं लेकिन वो एक अथाह सागर है मैंने जहां तक लिखा है थोड़ा बहुत उसी को फिर दोबारा मैं एक तरह से दोहरा हुआ हूं असल में बीसवीं सदी का जो आगमन था वो रविन्द्रनाथ के जीवन में कई प्रकार के ज्वार लेकर आया और कई तरह की चुनौतियां भी लेकर आए कवि मेधा से संपन्न रविंद्रनाथ एक और नवस्थापित शांति निकेतन के उत्थान के साथ स्वदेशी समाज के गठन के आग्रही थे तो दूसरी ओर विश्व मानवता को उद्बोधित करने को कटिबद्ध यह यह बताना जरूरी है कि भारतीय उपमहाद्वीप के एक प्रतिनिधि प्रवक्ता के नाते भी रविंद्रनाथ के कवि भावक और चिंतक व्यक्तित्व के असंख्य प्रेमी और प्रशंसक देश में नहीं विदेश में भी मौजूद थे भले ही वह एक पराजित और परतंत्र देश के वासी थे काव्य सृजन के साथ एक सुचिंतित निबंधकार के नाते उन्होंने 1901 से 1907 के दौरान कई विचार उत्तेजक निबंधों का प्रणयन किया है जो लगातार एक प्रतिष्ठित पत्रिका बंग दर्शन में प्रकाशित हुए थे ये निबंध 1907 में आत्मशक्ति नामक पुस्तक में संग्रहित हुए इसी में संकलित उनका प्रथम और विचार दीप्त लघु निबंध है जिसका शीर्षक है नेशन की यानी राष्ट्र क्या है और उसमें कोई विस्तृति चिन्ह बोधक चिन्ह या प्रश्नवाचक चिन्ह नहीं है उन्होंने छोड़ दिया नेशन क्या है बंग दर्शन पत्रिका के जब यह निबंध उन्नीस सौ इस एक में बंगाल को तेरह सौ नौ में छपा तभी से यह संवाद एवं विवाद वैचारिक विमर्श और विरोध का कारण बन गया था यानी आज मैं सोच रहा था कि 120 साल से हम उनके राष्ट्र की कल्पना को निशन क्या है और जिस तरह से रविन्द्रनाथ समझते हैं और फिर बाद में रविन्द्रनाथ ने इसमें क्या कुछ जोड़ा उसकी थोड़ी चर्चा मैंने अपने आलेखन की है इस निबंध के आरंभ में ही रविन्द्रनाथ यह स्वीकार करते हैं 
कि बांग्ला में नेशन पद या शब्द कहने पर शब्द का प्रतिशब्द नहीं इसका रूपांतर या रुआत नहीं कर सकते चलिए आम भाषा में साधारण तौर पर जाति कहने पर वर्ण का मूल होता है जिसे अंग्रेजी में रेस के द्वारा समझा जा सकता है हम लोग यानी बांग्लादेश जाति शब्द के प्रति शब्द के रूप में अंग्रेजी रेस शब्द का व्यवहार करेंगे और नेशन को नेशन कहेंगे बांग्ला में नेशन और नेशनल शब्द व्यवहारित होने पर अर्थ और भाव का द्वैत या द्वैत मिटाया जा सकेगा वह आगे छोड़ते नेशनल कांग्रेस शब्द का अनुवाद करते हुए हमने जातीय महासभा का व्यवहार किया है लेकिन जातीय कहने पर बांगाली मराठी सिख आदि अन्य कई जातियों का बोध हो सकता है भारतवर्ष के सर्व जातीय की प्रतीति नहीं होती मद्रास और बम्बई में नेशनल की अनुवाद चेष्टा में जाति शब्द का व्यवहार नहीं किया है उन्होंने स्थानीय नेशनल सभा को महाजन सभा और सार्वजनिक सभा का नाम दिया है बंगालियों ने कोई प्रयास किए बिना इंडियन एसोसिएशन नाम देकर छुटकारा पा लिया है इंडियन एसोसिएशन नेशन की में रविंद्रनाथ जिस मूल बिंदु को संक्षेप में रखते हैं वह इस प्रकार है नेशन एक सजीव सत्ता है एक मानस पदार्थ है इस पदार्थ की अंत प्रकृति ने को दो चीजों ने गठित किया है ये दो चीजें दरअसल एक ही वस्तु है इनमें से एक अतीत में अवस्थित है और दूसरा वर्तमान में थोड़ा सा मैं ये जोड़ना चाहूंगा कि आप वर्तमान पर तो अतीत को थोप सकते हैं लेकिन अतीत पर आप वर्तमान नहीं थोप सकते तो आगे बढ़ता हूं ये दो चीजें दरअसल एक ही वस्तु है इनमें से एक अतीत में अवस्थित है तो दूसरा वर्तमान में एक है सर्वसाधारण की प्राचीन स्मृति संपदा और दूसरे में परस्पर सन्मति एक साथ रहने की इच्छा एवं इनसे जो अखंड उत्तराधिकार प्राप्त हुआ है उसे समुचित ढंग से रक्षा करने की आकांक्षा ये है यह सोचकर अवश्य ही आश्चर्य होता है कि इक्कीसवीं सदी के दूसरे दशक में जिस यूरोपियन नेशन के तर्ज पर आज यूरोपियन यूनियन की स्थापना हुई उसका संकेत रविंद्रनाथ ने 1901 में ही कैसे दे दिया था वे लिखते हैं हो सकता है नेशनों के परिवर्तन काल में एक यूरोपीय संप्रदाय संगठित हो जाए लेकिन अभी तो इसका कोई लक्षण नहीं दिख पड़ता अभी तो इन समस्त नेशन की भिन्नता ही ठीक है और यह आवश्यक भी है वही है जो सबकी स्वाधीनता की रक्षा कर रहे हैं एक कानून एक प्रभु यानी स्वामी होने पर स्वाधीनता का स्वाधीनता के लिए संकट पैदा हो जाता है आज की स्थिति में भी इस बात को मैं दोहराना चाहूंगा वही है सबकी स्वाधीनता की रक्षा कर रहे हैं एक कानून एक प्रभु स्वामी होने पर स्वाधीनता के लिए संकट पैदा हो सकता है लेकिन रविन्द्रनाथ यही नहीं रुके वो इस गहन विषय पर निरंतर चिंतन करते हैं जो कालांतर में राष्ट्रवाद यानी नेशनलिज्म शीर्षक से 1917 में प्रकाशित हुआ आत्म शक्ति यानी में जो प्रकाशित संग्रह है वो फिर दोबारा नहीं छोड़ते उसको दूसरे उन्होंने भारतवर्षीय उसमें और दूसरी जगह उन्होंने उनके लेखों को पोष पुस्तक की आज तक मिलती नहीं जाकर दोबारा कभी छपे तो हमारे लिए उसका अच्छा उपयोग हो सकता है यद्यपि नेशन और नेशनलिटी की व्याख्या करते हुए जहां कहीं भी रविन्द्रनाथ ने अपने निबंधों का पाठ किया विचार व्यक्त किए वे जापान जैसे देश के लोगों को बेहद आपत्तिजनक लगे 
और वहां के पढ़े लिखे युवकों ने उन्हें अपमानित भी किया अमेरिकन प्रेस ने भी उन्हें तब नहीं बख्शा थोड़ा सा पुस्तक के बारे में राष्ट्रवाद नेशनलिज्म नामक लघु पुस्तक रविंद्रनाथ प्रदत्त उन व्याख्यानों का संग्रह है जो उन्होंने वर्ष उन्नीस सौ में जापान और अमेरिका के विभिन्न शहरों में दिया था तीन खंडों जापान में राष्ट्रवाद पश्चिम में राष्ट्रवाद और भारत में राष्ट्रवाद में विभाजित यह पुस्तक उन्नीस में प्रकाशित हुई इस व्याख्या यात्रा का प्रत्यक्ष उद्देश्य शांति निकेतन विद्यालय जो उन्नीस सौ में विश्व भारतीय विश्वविद्यालय बना के लिए आवश्यक धन संग्रह करना था जैसा आपने कहा हालांकि 1914 में जब विश्व युद्ध छिड़ा तो उस, उनके इस कार्य में आंशिक सफलता ही प्राप्त हुई रविन्द्रनाथ की राष्ट्र संबंधी परिभाषा इस प्रकार है कि यह लोगों की राजनीतिक यह लोगों का राजनीतिक और आर्थिक संघ है इस अर्थ में कि जब सारी जनता किसी यांत्रिक प्रयोजन से संगठित होने की स्वीकृति देती है यांत्रिक प्रयोजन यहाँ महत्वपूर्ण पर है यहाँ उनका बल संगठन और यांत्रिकता पर रहा वस्तुतः पश्चिम का राष्ट्र राष्ट्र और राज्य के मामले में सर्वविस्तृत है यह भौतिक उन्नति में संलग्न जनता का एक यांत्रिक संगठन है अतएव इसका स्वरूप अनिवार्य तौर पर आक्रामक और साम्राज्यवादी होता है सच तो यह है कि हमें उक्त व्याख्यानों को राष्ट्रवाद को साम्राज्यवाद समझ कर ही पढ़ना चाहिए यदि राष्ट्रवाद को वो साम्राज्यवाद का एक तरह से पर्याय कह रहे हैं अन्य अवसरों की तरह रविन्द्रनाथ प्रौद्योगिकी और निर्वैयक्तिक नौकरशाही में अविश्वास होने के कारण सभ्यता और आधुनिकता के पाश्चात्य रोमांटिक मीमांसा के समान इन व्याख्यानों में अपने तर्क प्रस्तुत करने लगते हैं इस अमूर्त कोट है इस अमूर्त वस्तु राष्ट्र का अर्थ है भारत पर शासन करना साथ ही वे भारत को निर्वैयक्तिक और यांत्रिक संगठन के उदाहरण के तौर पर प्रस्तुत कर देते हैं जो मनुष्य के साथ के संस्पर्श से यथासंभव अछूता रहता है उन्होंने चरखे का भी उल्लेख किया है संबंध में और गांधी जी के साथ जो भी मतभेद रहे लेकिन चरखे के साथ जो मानवीय एक संस्पर्श होता है उसको उन्होंने रेखांकित किया था ये फिर बाद में कि उन्होंने किन किन स्थानों पर अपने उन लेखकों लेखों को कई बार पढ़ा और वो फिर बाद थोड़े बहुत उन्होंने कला संस्कृति सौंदर्य बोध कला क्या है इत्यादि साहित्य और भारतीय मूल्य दर्श और प्राच्य के मूल्य दर्श और पाश्चात्य के जो मूल्य दर्श है उस पर उन्होंने चर्चा की और यदि 25 सितंबर 1916 से आरंभ कर 10 जनवरी 1917 तक लगभग चार महीनों में उन्होंने कुल 35 स्थानों पर संबंधित व्याख्यान किए उनकी यह यात्रा 21 जनवरी को समाप्त हुई इसका कारण यह था कि उन दिनों राष्ट्रवाद की समस्या उनके दिलों दिमाग पर बहुत हावी थी वे इस अमूर्त और अबूझ पद को राजनीतिक स्तर पर नहीं बल्कि मानवीय स्तर पर और सार्वजनिक सहमति के साथ पारिभाषित करना चाहते थे लेकिन जब तक वे राजनीतिक दुलभि संधियों और अलग अलग देशों की छोटी बड़ी प्राथमिकताओं तथा महत्वाकांक्षाओं को समझ पाते तब तक बहुत देर हो चुकी थी जापान में राष्ट्रवाद पुस्तक का पहला अध्याय कवि ने सबसे पहले एशिया में जापान के जागरण पर प्रसन्नता व्यक्त की और यह आशा जताई कि इससे शेष एशिया को भी आश्वासन मिलेगा उन्होंने उन दिनों को भी याद किया जब जापान बर्मा यानी म्यांमार और भारत के साथ पूर्वी एशिया के देशों से गहरे संबंध हुआ करते थे जापान की कला साहित्य संस्कृति उसकी अनिंद्य परंपरा प्रकृति प्रेम आदि की सराहना करते हुए रविन्द्रनाथ ने आधुनिकता और स्पर्धा के दबाव से 
जापानियों के बदलती प्रकृति और प्रवृत्ति को भी लक्ष्य किया था और बड़े निर्मम भाव से पूछा था कोर्ट लेकिन झूठ की समुद्री लहरें आपकी धारा के तट छूने लगी है क्या आपको उन व्यापारी विज्ञापनों को देखकर कभी शर्म नहीं आई जो अपने झूठ और अतिशयोक्तियों से देश की शहर की तमाम दीवारों को तो ढके ही रहते हैं और ये उन हरे भरे खेतों में भी पहुंच गए हैं जहाँ किसान ईमानदारी से श्रम कर रहे होते हैं और और उन चोटियों पर भी जहाँ प्रभाव की पहली किरणें पड़ती हैं मैं और भी उदाहरण में नहीं देना चाहता उसको तो निसंदेह उस समय कवि के दिमाग में राष्ट्रवाद का विषय पूरी तरह हावी था इससे अमेरिका के कुछ श्रोताओं को काफी निराशा भी हुई थी क्योंकि तो वे उनकी कविताओं और कविता संबंधी धारणाओं को सुनने की आस लगाए बैठे थे हालांकि तो उन्होंने जैसा मैंने कहा कि कला संस्कृति और सौंदर्य बोध से भी संबंधित कुछ व्याख्या दिए उन्होंने अपने स्वनिर्धारित विषय यानी राष्ट्रवाद को ही राष्ट्रवाद तक ही अपने को सीमित रखा और 20 से अधिक व्याख्यान राष्ट्रवाद और राष्ट्रवाद की राह पर दी पश्चिम में राष्ट्रवाद शीर्षक दूसरे अध्याय में राष्ट्रवाद की व्याख्या करते हुए रविंद्रनाथ ने लिखा था लोगों की राजनीतिक और आर्थिक संघ के अर्थ में राष्ट्र एक ऐसा दृष्टिकोण है जो सारे देशवासी किसी यांत्रिक उद्देश्य से संगठित होकर अपना ले समाज का अपना कोई बाहरी प्रयोजन नहीं होता यह खुद अपने आप में साथ ही होता है और मानव के सामाजिक प्राणी होने के होने की स्वैच्छिक अभिव्यक्ति होता है यह एक शक्ति का रूप होता है न कि मानवीय आदर्श का उन्होंने और भी जगहों पर यह पूरी जो किताब है लगभग साठ से पैंसठ पृष्ठों में तो उसमें बहुत से सुभाषित है जिसको आप कहीं भी कोट कर सकते हैं और उन्होंने राष्ट्र की जो परिभाषा है राष्ट्र के विरोध में मेरा ख्याल है कि कम से कम दो पृष्ठों में आप उनको संकलित कर सकते जिसमें उन्होंने उसको अफीम बताया है उसको क्रूर महामारी बताया है उसको एक अजीब दुगमा बताया है कि हम इसको लेकर के क्यों इसको धो रहे हैं इत्यादि क्योंकि तो रविन्द्रनाथ के लिए जो जैसा कि सचिव ने कहा कि वसुधैव कुटुम्बकम की जो एक धारणा रही है भारतीय धारणा उस पर वो आरोपित करना नहीं चाहते भारत में राष्ट्रवाद ये जो तीसरा जो खंड है इसका ये लगभग वैसा ही है जैसा कि आत्मशक्ति में स्वदेशी समाज और अवस्था व्यवस्था देशीय राज्य राज्य और ये पाश्चात्य की अवधारणा दोनों के उस तरह के मूल्य आदर्श उसी का उसी का एक प्रकार अंतर दिखाई पड़ता है उसी को थोड़ा सा विषयांतर करते हुए रविन्द्रनाथ ने कहीं कहीं राष्ट्रवाद से इसे जोड़ा है उन्होंने भारत की जो जाति प्रथा है बस दो मिनट और मैं बोलूंगा भारत की जो जाति प्रथा है उसके परिणाम धनात्मक एवं ऋणात्मक की चर्चा की है उनके अनुसार भारत ने शुरू से ही जातियों की भिन्नता को स्वीकार कर लिया था और उसके संपूर्ण इतिहास में सहिष्णुता की यह भावना दिखाई देती है भारत की जाति जाति प्रथा इसकी इसी भावना का परिणाम भारत लंबे समय से सामाजिक एकता के विकास से संबंधित यह प्रयोग करता रहा है कि एक तरफ तो सभी लोगों की एकता की भावना बनी रहे और दूसरी तरफ अपनी भिन्नता के बावजूद वे अपनी स्वतंत्रता का आनंद उठाते रहे इस यह संबंध यथा संभव शिथिल रहा है और साथ ही परिस्थितियों के अनुरूप निकटता का इसने एक तरह से सामाजिक संघ के संयुक्त राष्ट्रों को जन्म दिया है जिसका नाम है हिंदुत्व वे आगे लिखते हैं अतः अपनी जाति प्रथा के नियमन के लिए भारतवर्ष ने भिन्नता को तो स्वीकृति दी लेकिन परिवर्तनशीलता को नहीं ये एक उन्होंने जिसको धनात्मक हम कह सकते विचार है भिन्नता को तो स्वीकृति दी लेकिन परिवर्तनशीलता को नहीं जो जीवन का नियम है 
टकराव से बचने के लिए उसने अचल दीवारों की सीमाएं बना दी लेकिन प्रसार एवं गतिशीलता का गुणात्मक लाभ नहीं मिल सका
वो निश्चित तौर पे जिसे हम कह रहे हैं तो मुझे ऐसे समय पर निराला भी याद आ गई ये जो दो चित्ता पद है वे एक और मन रहा राम का जो ना थका कितना आसान है उस परिवेश में टेगोर के लिए उस स्वर में स्वर मिलाना जिसमें पहले तिलक हैं और गर्म तल है और बाद में गांधी पोखरे और तमाम लोग हैं तो जिन गांधी का स्वागत करने के लिए जब वो भारत आए तो टेगोर स्वयं चल के गए थे और उन्होंने उनका स्वागत किया जिन गांधी को उन्होंने अपनी संचित धन से उस समय 500 रुपया भेजा वो लड़ाई उपनिवेशवाद के खिलाफ जारी रखने के लिए उन गांधी के लिए टेगोर कहते हैं कि अगर उनका आंदोलन जोड़ता प्रेम सिखाता प्रेम की डोर में बांधता तो मैं उनके चरणों में बैठ जाता लेकिन गांधी को महात्मा मानते हुए भी ऐसा क्या है टेगोर के मन में जो उनको कहता है कि उनका रास्ता गांधी के रास्ते से अलग है और ये बात गांधी के जब आंदोलन चल रहे हैं तभी की नहीं है 1916 की बात हमने की कि घर घरे और बाहरे आ जाता है और व्यापक स्तर पर कोई कहता है निखिलेश टेगोर की और टेगोर है और वो तमाम बातें लेकिन जो बात साहा जी कह रहे थे कि राष्ट्र की संकल्पना क्यों नजर नहीं आती टेगोर को क्योंकि वो कहते हैं कि जो भारत बना है वो कई नस्लों से बना और फिर उन नस्लों को जोड़ने के लिए हमने जातियों के नाम दे दिए उस जातियों में आर्य अनार्य जातियों में भी वो जाति प्रथा चल पड़ी और जो जिस सूत्र पे साहा जी ने छोड़ा है कि भारत में इनमें भिन्नता जो है उसको तो स्वीकृति मिल रही है लेकिन परिवर्तनशीलता को नहीं तो टेगोर इस बात को स्वीकार नहीं कर पाते लेकिन वो बार बार ये कहते हैं कि हमें अपने भीतर झांकने की जरूरत है चढ़ का इसका उदाहरण है कि कैसे उनका मन जो है और हरे बहरे की भी जब बात हो रही थी दुमला की बात है तो सत्यजीत रे ने जो इतनी खूबसूरत फिल्म उस पर बनाई उसका एक दृश्य में कभी नहीं भूलती अगर कोई भारतीय संकल्पना हो सकती है स्त्री बात की तो वो टेगोर के यहाँ आती है और जिसे रे लव में दृश्य में फिल्माते हैं जब बिमला एक दस फिट का कॉरिडोर है जिसे पार करके बाहर आ रही है लेकिन ये जो परिवर्तन है ये स्त्री के पूरे अस्तित्व में किस तरह का परिवर्तन कर रहा है और कभी कभी फिर हम ये सोचते हैं कि क्या जरूरी है टेगोर को ये स्त्री के मन को इतनी बारीकी से पढ़ने की क्या जरूरत है जाति के आधार पर क्या जरूरत है गोला में जिस तरह से पूरा द्वन पड़ता है तो मुझे कभी कभी लगता है कि रविन्द्रनाथ ठाकुर ये जो दो चित्तापन ये अंतर भाव है ये बहुत स्प्रीमी है किसी भी साहित्य का क्योंकि जो ये सोचेगा कि जो मैं जानता हूँ बस वही अंतर है ये जो एब्सल्यूट में जाएगा अगर कोई साहित्यकार अपने आप को बचा सकता है इस अभिमान से तो वो टेगोर ने आजीवन किया अपने तमाम लेखन में अभी बात हो रही थी अमेरिका और जापान की जैसे साहा जी ने कहा कि लोगों ने बहुत स्वीकार नहीं किया तो टेगोर उसमें क्या देख रहे थे टेगोर देख रहे थे कि दक्षिण एशिया में जापान एक उदाहरण प्रस्तुत कर सकता है पूरे विश्व के लिए क्योंकि वो यूरोसेंट्रिक नहीं है जो आप कह रही थी कि जो यूरोसेंट्रिक नहीं है तो अमेरिका एक उदाहरण प्रस्तुत कर सकता है वर्ल्ड को पूरे विश्व को एक नेतृत्व दे सकता है एक नई दृष्टि दे सकता है लेकिन जापान और अमेरिका तो जर्मनी और ब्रिटेन बनना चाह रहे थे वो तो ताकत और वर्चस्व की लड़ाई लड़ना चाह रहे थे तो वहाँ टेगोर का उसे भी मुख भाव होता है लेकिन जो भी सीमित समय है चाहे जी ने कहा कि हम 
बात छोड़ दे वो हम सब जानते हैं महामानव समुद्र की बात मैं उस बात को इस तरह देखती हूँ कि कुछ चीजों को टेकोर ठस कर मतलब जो भी राष्ट्रवाद की परिभाषा हो सकती है उन परिभाषाओं में वो राष्ट्रवाद को ध्वस्त कर दे लेकिन अपनी साहित्यिक रचनाओं में हमें वो राष्ट्र की नई संकल्पना दे देते हैं जैसे जो बहुत ही मतलब वेयर द माइंड इज विदाउट फियर हम में से सब कोई पढ़ता है तो अगर उसकी अंतिम दो पंक्तियां भी देखें Where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, और जो पूरा आगे वो चलते हैं कि किस perfection की तरफ हम जाना चाहते हैं, चिंतन की किस साफ बोई की तरफ हम जाना चाहते हैं, अपने विचार और कर्म की जिस emancipation की तरफ हम जाना चाहते हैं, उस बदलाव की तरफ हम जाना चाहते हैं, उसकी संकल्पना के ऊपर हमें चलनी है। एक जगह टेम्पो लिख रहे हैं कि जो सारा झगड़ा है, वो संघर्ष जो है दरअसल सत्य और असत्य के बीच। तो टेम्पोर सत्य की बाहता में देश और दुनिया को एक नए नजरिए से देखने की कोशिश करते हैं। भारत तीर्थ में भी यही जो ये जो उनका नया नजरिया है ये पश्चिम के प्रति थोड़ा पश्चिम के प्रति भी उदार बादी है तो आर्य अनार्य द्रविड चीनी शक ऊन पठान मुगल सब यहाँ एक देह में लीन हो गए तो ये जो बात थी कि क्या उन्होंने अतीत को देखा या नहीं देखा क्या उन्होंने वेद या उपनिषद को देखा जो आप कह रहे थे कि अतीत को वर्तमान पे थोपा जा सकता है तो टेगोर तो कहते हैं कि रोशनी कहीं भी हो दिया कहीं भी जगह हम उसकी रोशनी से प्रकाशित हो सकते हैं तो टेगोर भले वेद का नाम ना लें वेद ही उपनिषद का नाम ना लें लेकिन वो एक अतीत हमें दे रहे हैं कि जो भारत है वो क्योंकि वो महामानव समुद्र है इसलिए हमारे राष्ट्र की संकल्पना ऐसी ही होनी चाहिए तो एक तरह से ये आधार बिंदु है टेगोर के पूरे चिंतन का चाहे वो साहित्य में पढ़े या उसको मन बदल कर अनेक अपनी लेखों में लाए एक और चीज है जो यात्राएं हुई थी जापान की रूस की वहां जाकर वो करते क्या है मतलब ठीक है शादी निकेतन के लिए संपत्ति इकट्ठी कर रहे थे थोड़े संसाधन इकट्ठे कर रहे थे लेकिन वो देखने जाते हैं कि स्कूल कैसे चलते हैं रूस में क्रांति हो गई है तो वो देखने जाते हैं कि ये जो नया सोशल ऑर्डर होगा इसमें श्रमिक और उसके संबंध क्या होंगे और ये स्पॉन्सर्ड विजिट नहीं है पढ़ाई करने नहीं गए हैं डिग्री लेने नहीं गए हैं सत्तर साल की उम्र में यात्रा की अनेक कठिनाइयां सहकर हो गए हैं और वहां से वो ये ज्ञान अर्जित करना चाहते हैं वे अन्य देशों अन्य लोगों अन्य संस्कृतियों से संवाद करना चाहते हैं यहाँ अन्य शब्द का प्रयोग में साबित राय कर रही हूँ क्योंकि हमारे लिए तो अन्य मतलब अदर तो ये जो वेस्टर्न पोइटिक्स है उसने हमको समझा दिया कि एक मैं हूँ आइडेंटिटी है और एक अन्य है लेकिन तेगोर जो पोइटिक्स हमें दे रही है उसमें ये जो अन्य है उसका जो अन्यत्व है वो घर पिघल जाता है तो ये ये जो चिंतन की उनकी पद्धति है ये आज भी हमारे सामने राष्ट्रवाद को एक नई तरह से प्रस्तावित करती है और बस मैं अंत में बस एक ही बात कहूंगी कि टेगोर ने आधुनिकता की परिभाषा भी बदलने की कोशिश की क्योंकि वो बार बार ये कह रहे हैं 
कि सच्ची आधुनिकता क्या है मन का आ, मन का बड़ा होना मन का विस्तार होना उसका उसकी जो स्वतंत्रता है वो जो है आधुनिकता की पहचान है तो इस तरह से वो एक एक सेतु बनते हैं जो परंपरा और आधुनिकता के बीच और ये जो उदारवादी नजरिया है जो साहित्य और संस्कृति में विकसित हुआ है उनके तो यहाँ वो एक तरह से उपनिवेशवाद सैन्यवाद साम्राज्यवाद उन सब का विरोधी है लेकिन जिस लिबर्टी की बात चौबे जी कर रहे थे उस स्वतंत्रता और न्याय की अवधारणा का प्रतिष्ठापक भी है और क्योंकि वो किसी ऐसी बहस में नहीं पढ़ना चाहता जिस बहस से चीज़ें रुकती हैं व्यवधान उपस्थित होते हैं जिसे वो अनप्रोडक्टिव हेटरेड कहते हैं ऑफ दॉरन तो उस सब लड़ाई में वो नहीं करना चाहते इसीलिए नॉन कोऑपरेशन मूवमेंट से असहयोग आंदोलन से उन्होंने अपने आप को अलग रखना बेहतर समझा लेकिन एक यही ये बात भी मुझे ध्यान आती है कि जो टैगोर और गांधी के संबंधों की हम बात करें तो गांधी का जो बहुत ही लोकप्रिय उदाहरण है कि मैं अपने घर के दरवाजे और खिड़कियाँ खुला रखना चाहता हूँ तो वो भी एक तरह से टैगोर के इस सवाल के जवाब में ही था तो उन्होंने शुरू कर उसकी पहली लाइन जो अक्सर निकल जाती है कि आई एम एज ग्रेट अ बिलीवर ऑफ फ्री एयर एज पोएट तो ये टेगोर के यही था तो दोनों दो स्तंभ हैं हमारे यहाँ जो हमारे सामाजिक और राष्ट्रीय चिंतन को प्रभावित करते हैं
an average person like you, if uh, you know Tagore wrote more than 20,000 pages, and if an average person like you copies his work, you will take 57 years. That's what he told me. And after that, of course, I was I was never keen on copying Tagore, but uh, it certainly introduced this tremendous dimension of, uh, of a poet and so many other things uh, which had to be explored and uh, our, my first exploration about the Hispanic conception of the world which related to uh, Spain then I expanded my area of interest to Latin America uh, in, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in doing this work, one obviously gets into so many other territories, so many other areas of interest, not just literature, not just poetry, but so many other areas of political, social, cultural thinking, uh, which is baffling. And since my area of work has been Latin America, Spain and Latin America. I thought I would take my interest in this direction to study the goals, various things that he has said, he has fought for, his ideas, how they are reflected in Latin America. Unfortunately, because of our colonial tradition or whatever it is, you know, our scholars have not shown that interest in that area. An area for which Tagore lived after the 20s and 30s. Tagore disappeared in the European world after the 20s and 30s because of his own English translations and all, which were transformed into other languages. But it is only in the Hispanic world, starting from Spain, where Juan Ramon Jimenez, the would be Nobel laureate of Spain, you know. He started working with his fiance, Zenobia Kampumi. From 1915 onwards, the first translation was said, and he said, just do all the translations possible. I have discovered a different world. So the great poet who was a oh, who was a forerunner of literary traditions and modernity in Spain, he found in Tagore a completely new area. And from the modernity of Spain and Europe, he wanted to shift his attention to the kind of poetry Tagore was writing. So this, you know, uh, made them work for the next 10 years on 22 works of Tagore. This is unparalleled in the history of any translation by anyone doing such immense work, leaving your own but just concentrating on translation from 1915 to 1922 23 So this was the dimension that <coughs> did not visit Spain. He was invited, but one of the most disappointing things for us is that he did not visit Spain. That would have really created a different world culture, particularly in Europe, because of his presence in Spain. Everything was arranged, even the flowers on the stage. Loka was to uh, participate in a play, Resurgeon, in his honor. And at the last moment, the telegram came that I cannot come. And this was such a disappointment for this couple. And Tagore was responsible for this because he went, obviously. He was caught up in a big, uh, you know, meeting that was being organized in Europe against fascism, you know, against, uh, you know, all kinds of oppressions that were coming. So he had to stay back, and obviously uh, his advisors advised him uh, to neglect Spain and to give importance, but he did. This was the most disappointing. Anyway, that's not the topic. 
the topic is now because of this uh, work in Spain and you know simultaneously the interest shifts to Latin America 22 21 Latin American countries speaking Spanish immediately you know they start talking about it in uh, from in 1970 uh, the uh, most important personality of the Mexican Revolution uh, where the revolution was on he was translating Tagore he translated four books and other four translations he brought to Mexico to do what? to actually to introduce it to the Mexican populace who was completely unaware of any other identity other than their own problems of poverty, of rural backwardness, of political uh, domination by a dictator and in that atmosphere he printed 25,000 copies of the ghost books and spread it across in order to create what he called a rasa cosmica, cosmic race he wanted to create in Mexico. This is the tremendous impact of the war uh, in, 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 in Mexico. So, story and gradually this expands, and I'm not going to uh, do the Hispanic reception of the war. I'm going to talk about, you know, this interest of, uh, you know, in the war, in his utterances, in his philosophy, in his thought, and even in his political thinking. So, this interest really spread. You know, imagine the first Vitamini translation was done in 1917 in Spanish in a country called Bolivia. We can't even imagine that. A person called Abel Alarcon, he was reading it in English, he was translated in 1917. Much before even Juan Ramón Jiménez in 1918, they knew it in Spain. Anywhere else. And only recently, two years ago, we discovered through an investigator from Ecuador, uh, Maria Elena Barrera, she discovered that the first translation of Vitangiri was done by a Cuban literary figure, a lady. Uh, you know, she trans translated the Gore, five points of the Gore in 19, at the end of 1912, at the beginning of 1913, and it was published there also in Cuba. Now these are the new things that are still coming out in 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 the Hispanic world. So that world, that part of the world, is is a fantastic area which we have neglected. We have we are now thinking of relations with Latin America, but we have not gone into the you know, places where we should have gone much earlier. Obviously, because of the our colonial hangover and all that has you know, uh, uh, influence that. Now, from this gamut of thinkers in Latin America, I want to bring to you, you know, Tagore visited, uh, you are, must be aware of his relation with Victoria Ocampo, he went and stayed, he was going to Peru, was invited, because they were going to give him a lot of money for his Shantirigeta project. He was going, but he could not, he fell ill, uh, and he, he had to, uh, you know, uh, be there in uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina for about two months, and this is the time of this relationship between him and Victoria Ocampo, which is another huge story, which is being talked about in many, many, many conferences now itself. Now, but the the point is in during that stay in Argentina, this lady Victoria Ocampo introduces him to the most important personalities, writers, and one of them is the great writer Jorge Luis Borges. You must have known, you must have read many, many sto stories and poems by Borges, one of the great writers from Argentina, from Latin America. Now, I am going to today present to you, you know, Borges, when he took over, did not show no interest in meeting five or six great intellectuals, writers, poets, which Victoria Campo, who, who, you know, she had brought and wanted to introduce, but did not show no interest. 
although he had recovered a lot, and he was listening to songs and other things, and he was having chats with Victoria Ocampo, he was much more interested in that, you know, personal relationship. And that also created uh, you know, a whole lot of literature, one can go into that. But out of those five or six important people who came to meet the goal, there was this great writer called Gorpis. And uh, we are aware of the, the whole world is aware of this great stature of Borges as a literary personality. Now Borges, uh, he came uh, into contact with Tagore's poetry, he did not like it. He, uh, in fact, he was a critic of uh, Tagore's poetry and he, uh, uh, you know, said it was very subjective. There was a lot of expanse in his thinking. Uh, this was not concrete, all that. But Borges later, you know, in 1961, he was asked by Victoria Ocampo to contribute an article for the journal that she was publishing. This is the cult called Sue. This is the year, you know, 1961 version where Borges wrote a piece on Tagore's nationalism. And I want to read you, read, uh, translate it, uh, you know, I, I have brought a, you know, uh, the whole idea of, I have not seen such a scrutinized, well-made presentation of nationalism even in many of our readings, readings from our scholars. This is, therefore I thought that I would, you know, uh, present this in this particular seminar. Now what does it, Borges, in 1960, he, he, he publishes in this journal in Sue, uh, a piece on Tagore's nationalism. And let's, let's listen to what he says. And he says, and I'm quoting him, at the end of the First World War, Tagore published in San Francisco three conferences whose common theme was to examine and disapprove of nationalism. From 1917, the context of the work has changed. No one has forgotten that in Italy and Germany, two dictators openly professed nationalism, one with emphasis and the other with emphasis and with ruthless efficiency. And we understand who they were. Now, on, now under the innocent mask of Marxism, he is writing it in 1961. Now under the innocent mask of Marxism, the government of Russia is also exercising nationalism. To the events that I have enumerated, there are others that the readers can add and none of them would invalidate in 1961 the book which Tagore wrote more than half a century ago and I would say it won't be invalidated even today. We can see it being manifested all the strands of nationalism in different ways about which we may not talk here. The rhetorical emphasis, and I'm reading from him again, the rhetorical emphasis and a certain oriental resignation apart, one cannot hide the sharpness of thought of the author Tego. Let's consider the general thesis of his work. And he does that. Tagore does not go into the mental or economic reasons of nationalism, although he admits the preponderant role, roles played by pride and greed. For Tagore, the root of the evil is the nation. Or in other words, in the very form of the Western states, which fatally engenders nationalism and its bloody shadow imperialism. Tagore had a personal love for England which moved him to write these words. And he quotes Tagore. We have felt the greatness of these people in the same way as one feels the sun. But their nation for us 
is a suffocating and thick cloud that hides the very sun. Then he goes on. He was in England, he saw in England the best virtues of the West, but he found it intolerable that the political form of that people should control the, control the Indians. On page 131, one reads, I'm not against the nation in particular, but yes, against the general idea of all the nations. What is a nation? It is an entire people under a kind of organized power. This organization unceasingly promotes the power and efficiency of the people, but its tenacious will deviates the human energies of their highest nature, the human energies of their highest qualities. And what are these two qualities? He talks about, he, he says, of human nature. In these two qualities dwell sacrifice and the creative impulse. These are the two highest human qualities to go talks of. It's as if the capacity of sacrifice of the individual gets deviated from its true end, which is moral, for serving the organization, which is mechanical, the state. That gives him a sense of moral exaltation. Everybody feels morally exalted, which makes it infinitely dangerous to humanity. He doesn't, it doesn't perturb him, his conscience, when he can transfer that responsibility to that machine, which is a creature of his intellect and not of his total personality. By beings of this artifice, the people who love liberty perpetuate slavery in vast regions of the world strengthened by the flattering con conviction of having complied with his duty. We all think we have complied with our, our duty when the state tells us, this you have to do, this is your pride and you will become a martyr. The state convinces us and we become a victim to that thinking. Shaw, Bernard Shaw, rejected capitalism which condemns some to poverty and others to tedious monotony parody. Tagore rejects imperialism, which diminishes the oppressed and the oppressor. Oriental and Occidental culture combined in this man who managed the two instruments of English and Bengali. In each page of this book coexist the Asiatic affirmation of the unlimited possibilities of the soul and suspicion that the state machine inspires in Spencer. Nationalism tempts men not only with gold and power but with the beautiful adventure, with the sacrificial devotion and with onerous death. If he, when he ate it, if he died, listening to the state to defend its national. It has its calendar of hangmen and also of martyrs. To suffer and to torment become equal just as to kill and to die. One who is ready to be a martyr can also be a hangman. And Torquemada is not any other than the reverse of Christ. Torquemada is that Dominican friar in the 15th century uh, who actually uh, tried to bring in all communities, all castes in Europe, in Spain, uh, under the, you know, the guise of the Inquisition into Catholic groups, Catholic rites, Catholicity. So he says that like a person like that, Torquemada is none other than the reverse of Christ. This is where his uh, Morpheus' uh, piece on Tagore nationalism ends. 
And after this, there has been a lot of discussion within Argentina itself on this very piece of divorce nationalism. This is the first time, you know, elsewhere in Latin America, most uh, authors have talked about, you know, divorce uh, short stories translated in Mexico, in Argentina, in many places, the uh, poems. Uh, and there, most of these people have seen the, you know, the, the, the essence of the ghost universalism, where and the, 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 the idea of the self and the other, how the self always contains the other, this is a, uh, yeah, a huge explanation. Uh, I cannot go into that here. You probably know it already. This personality, human personality, which should contain the other within the self. Now, uh, which will create the kind of universalism that talk, that the God talked about. So, in most of Latin America, uh, most writers who worked on the God from 1917 onwards till today, you know, they have been analyzing Tagore's universalism instead of going into these specific areas of nationalism. But it is Borges alone who created this uh, debate uh, of, you know, and still in many uh, universities, uh, I have myself been a witness uh, of that in Argentina, uh, where they uh, discuss Tagore's idea and the whole way in which he was, he symbolized a counter modernity. As against the European or Western modernity, which was based on commerce and greed and conquest, Tagore's counter modernity introduces the element of spirituality. Humanity fully imbibed with spirituality. And this is the idea from the beginning of the 20th century that is working in Latin America. They are open to these ideas. And Tagore has therefore been, uh, you know, a, 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 a kind of an influence in many of their writings in so far as his idea of universalism is concerned and in so far as what many Latin American intellectuals are doing. I won't like to take more of your time. I, there are so many other aspects that can be added to this. Uh, it was, uh, you know, 100 points of COVID, how it created a tremendous influence in, in, in Argentina, in a hatred uh, society. And there are so many other books, you know, Mashi, for example, story which brings out this whole idea of uh, self and the other and universalism that was uh, you know, brought out by the Mexican uh, great literary figure in 1922, uh, who belonged to a great movement you know, at that time. Uh, this was brought out by Jose Gostiza. So there are many Latin Americans, uh, you know, in all the Latin America, I just talked about Bolivia. We can't even imagine that a Bolivia person would come up to translate in 1917. So, Latin America is a place where Tagore is still being, and I have not discussed it, his ideas of education. In Puerto Rico, in Costa Rica, there are so many scholars who, in 1921, they are discussing his uh, you know, ideas of education. And these uh, scholars, are still exploring in Brazil, for example. In Brazil, uh, I was just reading uh, somebody has you know, sent me a tweet where there is a school where uh, you know in, in Brazil in Rio de Janeiro where they are still teaching in a big way through the Korean ideas of inaugurated, but many of our speakers understood him as a chairperson also. Now he is compelled to give some kind of uh, remarks from the chair. Yeah, it was a treat to listen to all of you, but particularly the last speaker. 
because many of the unexplored areas of Tagore in the world which is completely hidden from us have become very relevant, very, very, very clear to our eyes. Particularly, uh, the, the important point that Tagore was making that people who love liberty, how can they perpetuate slavery? Elsewhere. That's something which is very important. And the idea of selfing the other uh, is the self that Tagore has always been talking about. How that has impacted um, the, the authors, the writers, and the social activists in so many countries in, in Latin America. That's something which is very crucial. And I think the, uh, the point that was made by all of us, all of the other speakers, uh, starting from David Chobiji, who said that they did not react to the 1857, uh, but uh, went on these pieces on, in novels, particularly in short stories. Uh, but we also remember that they uh, started writing his essays much earlier. This is very interesting that uh, what was happening was that Tagore was actually uh, perhaps bracing, preparing himself to write more uh, serious prose, creative prose later. But he started his analytical writing, critical writing much earlier than 1980. So that's something which is interesting that as he, uh, as he joined uh, Borendranath in their experiment in Chantaniketan, the matter became much more important because then he was actually nation building in a way, he was building education, building the next generation. So that extent I think is very crucial. And uh, I, I like the way uh, Devendriji talked about the way uh, various um, aspects of life became so important in Bangla, Mati, Bangla, Jol, uh, and at that point of time also, we also recall that we had Aurindana Tagore painting Bharat mm -hmm. uh, So, these were all happening parallelly. So, this connection is very important. They were in discussion uh, in this area. So, that is something. And uh, then we, of course, had uh, Moshumi talking about uh, decolonialization in the education. Uh, how uh, you can differ from the Eurocentric models. This is something that's very crucial because uh, all of our space has been dominated by uh, Eurocentrism in almost every uh, social reformer. Uh, I won't really call Tagore a social reformer. I don't know what he was because he was so many people, so many different uh, roles loaded to one. And also the, the important the importance that she gave uh, on the untranslatability issue of what is nation, I mean nation in Indian language, what is nation, how do you have to translate. Uh, and if you want to really call nation Samaj, then back translate Samaj into that. What, how do you do that? If, if nation is Jati, then back translate this. How do you do that? So this is a very important uh, point that she was raising. Uh, but Saha uh, uh, very candid that uh, as many times as he would read Tagore, uh, not necessarily for those who are listening to his speech, but even for himself, it is so important to find this, find this uh, newness in Tagore. Even today, how relevant uh, is, and of course, he says, "Ek jivan kafi nahi hai which is true. In fact, uh, when I was talking to Sudan the uh, we were actually trying to find a Tagore archive for Jalapur University, which was also jointly done by uh, us in Vishwarthi. We were trying to find out that, you know, when you have 17, 18 variations, 13 different variations of the same text, how do you do that? I mean, you write the same text 13 times. So, it's, it's, so, it's not just those 90,000 pages. It's more than that. And it's not the 40,000 letters add to that. I don't know how, you know, in fact, uh, we counted the words and found that uh, we need three different people and their entire life to copy down what they wrote. So it's 
started 57 years, but it is <laughs> also very crucial. So I think uh, Sarah also raised this issue of uh, mutual incompatibility between the terms in English and terms in Indian languages, and uh, particularly uh, when he's talking about the imposition of past on the present and position of present on the past. That concept is uh, very much uh, is in his speech. And uh, particularly how on the humanitarian ground he was trying to define the nationalism rather than the political ground. The, uh, he used a very interesting uh, concept, Subhashita. Uh, Subhashita in Tibor's certain writings, you can quote almost from anywhere. Everything is quoted in the court. So that is very interesting uh, way of looking at it. Uh, and Rekhaji uh, talked about the true modernism and the spread of it that, that uh, Tagore was raising a question about, or Yantri Kastrava that he was questioning. And that's something which will be crucial. Uh, but I liked her uh, initial comment about uh, how she grew up trying to complete all the poems of Charlie <laughs> I was just trying to imagine somebody trying to do that. And uh, also the particular way, since we are also into uh, centenary celebration of Satyi Dari, his way of looking at Vivala, at portraying Vivala in the film, uh, that you cross so many steps to come out of uh, your cocoon. That's something which is very important and bringing up uh, Bharat Mahasamudra into the discussion of nationalism. I think it was a very uh, profitable thing for all of us. I'm sure all of us will agree that today we have learned a lot. We became richer by definitely many times learning from each other. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Governor and CD. There was uh, uh, something about this whole event and make it uh, easier for us to say thanks. Mm -hmm. All the Indian scholars who presented wonderful uh, uh, speeches in a different perspectives as uh, Professor Narayan has told us. Also, uh, it's already late uh, now. So, uh, once again, thank you so much and I request all of the giant team. I just wanted to tell all of you that, you know, the, uh, uh, you know this uh, uh, an Argentine film made on uh, Tagore and you know, Victoria Ocampo that is being shown now in, in the next seven days in the year So you might take this opportunity to see this film. It's a relation between, it's based on the relation between but he talks about the, uh, the, the, the education, uh, the whole importance of the education system in Shanghai Nikita and how it can you know, transport it to the Latin So that's a very interesting film. Thank you. Thank you so much.